I've been a front-end developer for over two years now. I've made a lot of mistakes and I have a few regrets, but I also have learned a lot from those mistakes and regrets as well. If you want to know what I've learned, I'll go ahead and talk about it right after this intro. What is up YouTube? Welcome to the channel, man. So I have been a developer for about two years now. Uh, I've been a front-end engineer. I don't work with back-end. I do want to though. I really want to start with learning Node.js or PHP very soon. I feel like I've qu learned quite a bit as a front-end developer at my company. I've honestly made a lot of mistakes. There are things I, I know for a fact that I could have done better but I didn't. There are things that I know that I should have done and I didn't. I mean, at the same time, I've learned so much through those mistakes as well. And so I figured that I'd go ahead and share with you what I learned and really my history and what my life has been the last two years. I mean, I've been studying code for just three months and I honestly had no idea. I never, I didn't think I would get hired for at least a year, but I figured and I told myself, I remember this at this point after studying code for three months, I mean, I, I might as well just apply to jobs now because I don't apply to the jobs that are available now. Even if I don't have a chance, those jobs will be gone anyway in a matter of months, if not weeks, right? Or days. And so I figured, why not just send out my application while I'm learning code? And you never know, maybe someone will bite and maybe someone will give me an opportunity to work for them. And so I, for two or three weeks, I was sending out applications. And I remember with this company, I saw what they were looking for. They were looking for people who had experience in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, PHP. I had none of that experience. <laughs> I only knew HTML and CSS, that's it. But I thought, you know what? There's not that many languages. And I figured I just might as well apply. And I went ahead and I sent in my application to this company and no one responded. And so, I, because I really thought I could work at this company, I thought I could have a chance, I actually went ahead and I gave him a call and I spoke directly with the CEO, got transferred. And after that conversation, he told me that we should meet and gave me his email. I emailed him. So day after, we're going to meet for an interview, which was mine. I'm like, wait, what? Am I having my first tech interview? I was so surprised and shocked. I didn't think that would really happen. And so what happened is I, I went ahead, I went in, showed him my basic website, which doesn't exist anymore. Um, and he gave me the job. Uh, he gave me a really good job offer. But yeah, I got my first developer job right away. And so yeah, so I joined my company. My first six months to 12 months at that company, I'm not gonna lie, I had imposter syndrome. I think they thought I was better than I really am, but I really suck at coding. I'm not that good at all. Um, I remember always like being afraid to ask questions. I All I knew was HTML, CSS, and now I'm here trying to do J jQuery, you know, the library for JavaScript, my first programming language that I'm learning. I have no idea what to do. Literally, when I was learning at my company, when I was at the office, I would go at teamtreehouse.com, right? Link in the description below, get seven days for you. <laughs> but I remember just going to the office and learning, and I would literally learn at Treehouse, JavaScript, at Treehouse, at work, and I would get paid paid to learn JavaScript, which is insane. That, like Companies don't usually do that, right? And so I felt like when I got this job, I skipped so much that people would try to have to learn on their own. And I had a chance, an opportunity to learn at my company. And so because I was learning these skills on the job at a professional level, I was able to advance my skills as a developer much more quickly. But at the same time, my biggest regret, right, within my first six months to a year at my company, I rarely ever asked for help. Um, I would be too prideful to ask for help because I felt like, again, I felt like I was gonna found out I'm not that good. But they knew my skill level. This is something that I, I have learned is that you can't hide how good or how bad you are at a company. Your skill level will show very easily, very clearly. And that's why it's very important from the moment you have your interview, you are very clear about the skills you have. When they hire you, they're gonna expect you that you're here, but if you're here and you're hiding it, but through that interview, you pretended you're all the way up here, and sometimes just you'll make it past an interview. When you get the job, they'll be like, wait, we, this is not why we hired you. So it's very important to be clear from the beginning. They will hire you for who you are and the skills you have. Otherwise, I think it'll just make it hard on yourself. And the thing though, this is my mistake. I thought they didn't know how bad it was. <laughs> and they clearly knew. I talked to my manager all the time, and he would tell me, Chris, you suck, man, when you got hired here. You were bad. You, you didn't even know HTML. You barely knew HTML, CSS. You didn't know jQuery or JavaScript whatsoever. I mean, I remember that. But that's why it's very important to be honest. And it's okay to ask questions. It's okay if you don't know something. That is normal. All developers are are constantly learning. I, mean, I honestly think that the best developers out there are the ones who are willing to ask questions, who are willing to show they don't know something and put in the effort to know it rather than pretending you know it and slowing things down and slowing yourself down as a programmer too. So anyway, so continuing on from there, after six months at my company, I answered a post on Quora.com. It went viral. It got sent to about 35 million people, which is 
pretty insane to be honest. And then I figured, shoot, you know, people really like the story that I became a developer in three months. And I told them how I did it. And I told myself, maybe I'll go ahead and make my first YouTube video. Boom, five months later after them, I get hired as a developer. I go ahead and I upload this video on YouTube. Hey guys, this is Krishan, and this is the life of a web developer. <laughs> This is on November 24, 2016. I upload my video on how I became a developer in three months and went viral. It has about 230,000 views right now. Kind of insane. And yeah, I went viral. And from there on, I figured, shoot, I, I want to get better as a programmer. I want to get better as a developer. So I figured I might as well document my journey as a developer. So my YouTube channel, this channel actually started as a vlogging channel. I don't vlog like I used to anymore, although I miss it and I love it, right? I started vlogging and documenting my journey and um, talking about my mistakes. After 12 months as a developer, I was able to get more projects done. I'm doing the same thing over and over again, getting more comfortable with HTML, CSS, the DOM. And still, even though I understood JavaScript, I still didn't understand what JavaScript was capable of doing. Um, and so, now what happened is that for the next six months, uh, from my first 12 months as a professional developer to my, from you know year one to year one, to year one and a half, I was going all out on YouTube. I was posting videos almost every other day, every day. I was posting five videos a week and started going all crazy. This was my big mistake, although at the same time, I'm very thankful that this happened. This point, these six months, uh, I didn't focus on learning code at all. Uh, I would talk about it and I would gradually learn it. Boot camps would sponsor me. Treehouse would give me access to courses and everything. Um, but these six months, I slowed down on my growth as a developer. So I could say that my biggest regret was letting YouTube slow my growth as a programmer and getting better as a programmer. Because I can honestly say, guys, um, if I did not have this YouTube channel, I mean, I would be a much better programmer. Making vlogs in general, learning how to edit videos and make content and learning code at the same time, it was very difficult to do. And so for those six months, I barely and I rarely ever took time to study code and I slowed down my growth. And so for those six months, I was honestly solely focused on YouTube. Then, boom, six months later, after being a developer for a year and six months, I told myself, as much as YouTube's doing well, and I got paid well here on YouTube, guy. but I told myself, as much as I love YouTube, I love coding more. I love programming more. Programming, it's something I enjoy so much, and I don't wanna just stay stuck at just HTML, CSS, and basic JavaScript. I wanna learn advanced JavaScript. Um, this is when I started talking about React and really diving into it and looking at frameworks. And as I was learning React, wow, I realized how much I didn't know about JavaScript. Um, after a year and six months as a developer, I took an assessment test in JavaScript, and I realized that I'm really bad at it. And so, from that point on, realizing how much more I need to improve on, from that point on, I started learning code like crazy. And as you might be able to notice, if you look at my history on my videos, I went from uploading like five videos a week, six videos a week, to only three, two, or sometimes one video a week. Why? Was because I was focused on just getting better as a programmer. After learning Vue.js, and I'm still learning it, the last six months, what I've done from that point is that I made it a goal to really study JavaScript more than ever, and not even just study and memorize things, or my goal was to understand it, what the purpose of JavaScript was, and really what it's capable of doing, and making my own stuff on the side, and making more complicated things at work, and the same things I was doing at work, my goal was to make sure I did that exact same JavaScript, but make it even more simple, even more clean, and stop writing dry code, and just stop repeating myself and making things more better. And um, by doing these things, I just learned so much. I can also say now, as being a developer for two years, I am very confident in what I do. After being a developer for two years, I still feel like I know nothing. I'm still very hungry to learn, and I'm still very hungry to become better. Coding is something that I enjoy and I'm very passionate about, and something I love so much. And I'm never gonna let that stop me from becoming a better program and nothing will stop me and I just want to do this for the rest of my life. You never stop learning. And people ask me what keeps me going is even though I've made it, one thing I live by is gratitude. What gratitude does, it reminds me, Chris, even though you failed, you still have it good, you're alive, you're not dead. And gratitude tells me, Chris, you don't have it worse than other people. People have it worse than you. You're still eating your food on the table. You still get to live your life. What else gratitude does is that when I get up there, when I grow in the industry or I grow as a YouTuber, what gratitude does is it keeps me humble. And what gratitude does is when I make it, Chris, you still haven't done anything yet. Right? Gratitude reminds me, Chris, you're still nothing yet. You haven't done anything yet. There's still so much more you need to improve on. And by living by through gratitude and with gratitude, it keeps me level-headed and it keeps me hungry. Also, remember where you came from and that's exactly what, what I do. I mean, I remember where I came from. And so, now I'm here, man. So many opportunities are coming up. A really big one's coming up very soon and I can't say, tell you yet, um, but I will soon. But it's all because I started coding. I was living paycheck to paycheck two years ago. Man, like, I can't believe I am where I'm at. And still, I, this is just the beginning. 
And so that's how my last few years developer has been. But anyway, you guys, yeah, that's how my last few years as a developer has been. So thank you guys for watching. If you want more stuff or want to learn about anything else, post a comment below. And if you like these type of videos, please like this and I appreciate it a lot. Well, I got to go. Thank you guys for watching. This is Krishan. This is a life for a developer. And I'm out. Peace. Thank you.